Interrogations often reveal more than what meets the eye, but sometimes they expose secrets that leave even seasoned officers speechless. So what happens when officers stumble upon a confession they never saw coming? Here are the times cops uncovered shocking secrets during interrogations. On May 2, 2021, Rosemarie Kyle left her two-year-old, Trinity, under the supervision of her boyfriend, Malik Kiri Kennedy, while she went to work. When she returned to the house later in the evening, she found her toddler unresponsive, seemingly lifeless. She asked Kennedy what had happened, but he refused to give clear answers. Eventually, she called 911, and paramedics rushed to the scene, trying to revive the little girl. Unfortunately, she had passed away. Kennedy was taken into custody as a prime suspect, and the following shows his haunting interrogation at the police station. Now, when you guys were living there, was Trinity living with you guys? Mm -hmm. Did you guys have your own room? No. Where did you guys sleep at? Together. Wait, where in the apartment? In my room. Huh? In my room. Yeah, so you guys had, you guys had your own bedroom then? Mm -hmm. Okay. And where did Trinity sleep at? In the bed. Sleep with you guys? Okay. And when did you guys start living at the call of the end? Mm -hmm. Say about after March. After March, okay. Did you you and your friend have a falling out? Is that like why did you leave the apartment? Uh, it was due to eviction, basically. Okay. So. okay. Then whose idea was it to live in the hotel? Uh, yeah, everybody's really. Walk me through what happened today. What like walk me through your day? What time you get up? What time? Woke up around. 1040 something maybe. Okay. Yeah, about 1040 something. And basically woke up in the normal. Rose go to work. And once she goes to work, I'm I'm just watching training. Okay. Um from there it's the normal. Uh watching her, make sure she eats and everything, but you know, okay. Now, how often do you watch Trinity? A lot. A lot. Like, how, how many days a week? Pretty much every day she worked. Okay. So it was just like maybe five days out of the week. Okay. Depending. And how many hours a day do you watch her? Uh, depends on what time she goes in, time she get off. But I mean, does she usually work like a, an eight, eight, eight and a half hour day? Or, I mean, no. lunch and a dinner shift portion of it? Mm -hmm. About to like, it would be like three to, three to one, four to one. Okay. So it's a lot of responsibility that it seems like for you. Huh? Um, it is. I mean, uh, we talked about that. So far, Kennedy's body language and answers do not seem concerning. But it is apparent that taking care of two year old Trinity was not something Kennedy was fond of. With enough background information, the officers jumped to the incident at hand. So, what time does she leave today for work? She was around like 11. 11? She had to be there about 11, so she left around like 11. Okay. So when she left, kind of just walked me through the day, what did you guys do in the room? Well, uh, from the moment she left, it was pretty uh, just normal. I played my game. She's on her tablet or doing whatever she does, but, um, you know, like I told Rose, uh, she just has this thing where she just, she'll flip out and start just doing the most, you know, um, like, yeah, so she just always does the most, and that's pretty much it. Okay, so her flipping out, like just misbehaving? Mm -hmm. yes. Like anything like you can imagine. From, I don't know, like, uh, explain to me. So what does she do today? What does she do today? Then? Knocking things over, okay. just, just screaming, hollering, stop, stuff like that. At this point, for the first time, it becomes even more prominent that Kennedy was not happy with Trinity's behavior. But realizing the officers might catch on to his displeasure, he tries covering up by saying this. Just normal kid yeah. stuff, really. Okay. But terrible too, I guess, as they say, as she was saying. And does she do that with Rosie's when Rosie's in the room? Mm -hmm. Okay. And does Rosie allow that to happen? Yeah. Yeah. Um, does Rosie discipline her? 
like speaker on the butt or anything like that? Not really. No. Not really. Does she allow you to do that? No. No. Have you done that in the past? To her? Yeah. Like if she's misbehaving. Yeah. Not a, yeah. But what do you do? Uh, normally, like before, like at first, I just like it might be like I might pop her, and then like if anything else, then she's standing in the corner, like you know, mm-hmm. she's just standing in the corner. That's it. Or I might take, not give her something like juice and the sugars and stuff that she be wanting. Mm-hmm. That's all. I take that away. She don't get it. And how do you how do you pop her? Describe that to me. Mm-hmm. Like that. Like, it's like a pop, it's the same thing as about popper. Mm-hmm. So what what went on in the room today with her? What was her misbehaving? Uh, what was kind of just? As I told Rose, I said, you know, it started from her just screaming and spilling her juice and just spilling it everywhere, like doing it on purpose and doing things like uh like I said, kick the lamp over or she might just spilling juice and screaming. Mm-hmm. That's the most she would do. Just, you know, just not listening, so. Although Kennedy tries his best to avoid sounding suspicious by saying, kids can be kids, the way he details the punishments he used to give out to two-year-old Trinity is anything but harmless. Unfortunately for him, the officers realize something is amiss. When she's acting up and spilling the juice and kicking the lamp, what do we do? Normally, how, how do we punish her? Normally, I just like... I would tell her to stop, mm-hmm. or uh, basically, like I would just like I would, I'll grab her, grip her up, and that's it. And that's about it. Okay. Well, it seemed like she didn't stop today, right? Yeah. Okay. So how did we correct that thing? There was no correction really. It was simple as just the normal, you know, just um, I said he thought. Pop her, or if I'm out her bro. You do what? Uh, Sorry, I grip her up. Really, that's it. Now, did you ever give her any medicine today? Yeah, I did. What did you give her? Medicine. Okay. When did you give her that? Why did I give her When? What time? When? Uh, I don't know the time. Uh, maybe three, two. I'm sorry? Maybe three, two okay. o'clock. So, what, what did you put it in? I might just give it to her. You know, regular, how we always do. I, I, I don't know. So, so just say, just give it to her in mouth, that's it. Okay, so like is it? Like a drop, is a drop, just. So how many drop? like how much did you give her today? Uh, pretty, uh, good amount. Like, it was about halfway, almost, so it's almost, not mm-hmm. really at the top left. Kennedy admits to something shocking. He gave almost 0.5 milliliters of melatonin to a two-year-old when that dosage is not considered safe for toddlers that young. With that concerning detail having surfaced, officers press for more information. How long before is she sleeping? How long does it usually take to kick in? Today? I don't know. You don't know? No, because I, I'll be honest, I normally never know how long it takes to kick in. So, what time did you put her in the bed? Uh, well, she been, she been in and out of the bed early, so mm-hmm. it was more so she been in and out of the bed. She was never like in the bed permanently, she just was in and out of the bed. But, um, I think after my mom left, she, she took a nap. Go back up. Three, four. So it's, I don't know, two, three. That's what time she fell asleep? By the in and out. She was in and out of going to sleep. Okay. So. And then what time did Rosie get back to the room today? Like five. Something. Okay. Now, how did she get into the room? I let her. Hmm? I let her. Is that right? Okay. Um, now, when she's in the room, where where's Trinity at? In the bed. Still in the bed. Okay. 
And then at what point did she pick her up? Or, I mean, kind of, like I said, I'm trying to Basically, figure out the timeline. Basically, she just checked on her. She tried to, like, she just checked on her, like, like, we was talking about it. I had told her, like, like normally, like, mm-hmm. if Trinity does something, and then, like, I basically, like, like, I was, like, I pinched her. And then she was, like, you know, like, that okay, today? she, yeah, today. So she's, like, um, you, you know, you got to be careful. You, she, she bruises. So what, where, you didn't mention the part of pinching, so where did you pinch her at? But I was there, so I did, that, I did that on her cheek, though. On her cheek? Which side? Left. What Kennedy doesn't know is that Trinity's body was covered in bruises when she was found, indicating that something other than the melatonin administration happened. Slowly, Kennedy admits to the assault he put Trinity through. So there, there's some other markings in baby's face. Yeah, she had her head up earlier today, and that was also my fault because I, I don't know, seeing it like when she walked out and like I, I have, um, put her on a bed, her head hit the headboard. You're mumbling, can you tell me? hit the headboard, okay. basically. Um, so, when did that happen? That was right before she left, like, right before she left. Who left? Rose. Okay. And where are the other markings on her face? From either past or past, really. What? From the past, really. Like, uh... Basically, I'm not, I'm not, this is not my first time, like, like, you know, like, like, I'd be like, pinch her or something, mm-hmm. so, but, that would be my way of, like, you know, like, she was, she was talking, like, you gotta find a way to, like, you know, work it out or whatever it is, and I just, like, I'm trying to figure out, like, how to handle it or whatever, just, and that's the way I end up going about it, just, so, I'm gonna pinch her. How hard did you pinch her? Mm, depends. When you pinched her today, did she did she cry? She always cry. Huh? She always cry. She always cries. Something like that. Kid hitting the headboard, hitting the head on the headboard. That's be pretty tragic. So I mean, I mean, yeah. So I mean, was she in the room when that happened? She was leaving. Okay, so she's probably out of the room then, huh? Uh, yeah, she was leaving. While Kennedy claims that Trinity hit her head on the headboard while he was putting her to sleep, forensic evidence later reveals that Kennedy actually smashed her head against it, knocking her unconscious immediately. I mean, I can't, I can't lie, I was dead, I was angry. That's the clear, that's the, you know. No, uh, I'm I, there, I, trying to play your video game. Screaming on top of her lungs, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, did, did the neighbors knock on the door? No. The room service come to the door? No. Yeah. Did the hotel staff come to the door and say, hey, what the hell's going on here? No, they just, no. Anything, anything can agitate me. Anything. But more or less today, you were really agitated because the kid was crying. Yeah, I did, more or less. Okay. I'll say, yeah. Uh, so how did, how did the, how did Trinity get the bump on the head? Really? Headboard. Okay, and what about the... Was it was it cut on the lip? Yeah, there was multiple. No, she bailed it. No. No. That wasn't a bite mark. Well, regardless of you're gonna tell me something, but I'm just gonna go in my side, so she bumped her head. What about the lip though? And, oh, in the lip she she bite she bumped. Did, yeah. Did that happen today? It happened today. Okay. Now how did it happen? Probably when I, uh, when I made her uh, head on the headboard. You made her head, her head on the headboard? Not like, I did it, like I just did it. And that's the problem, like, and that's what's even making me go to like, it's the fact that like, like when I did that and everything, like it wasn't intentional, it's not oh, on purpose, Listen, it's not. And we're not saying you did it on purpose, okay? Uh, so I mean, yeah. we're, we're just trying to get your side of the story, man, okay? So how did you hit, how did you make her hit her head on the head, headboard? Walk me through it. I was like I don't know like I had just like really put her in the bed like I don't know and then she had it like I don't know I guess it was the way I did it mm-hmm. so when I did it it was weird however I did it and it hit the headboard on my ex she was like 
um, she she said something to me. She was like, she said something. I don't remember what she said, but I remember her saying she got on me about it, and I was like, because oh. we yeah. had we just had an um, argument or whatever. So did you pick the kid up and throw the kid against the headboard? Not no. It was more like like it's not, you're not like you're a, not describing like you're not you're not doing a very good job explaining it. So not pretty good at that at all. Really. Okay, take a deep breath, relax. Just, how did you do it? With intellect, the officers are able to corner Kennedy and make him admit that he intentionally smashed Trinity's head against the headboard. The officers realize they've got him cornered now and go in for the decisive statement. So why, why are there bloody towels in the trash can? Tell me about From that. From her lip. Hmm? From her lip. She, her lip was bleeding. And how did her lip get... How did her lips start bleeding? From her, that I assume. Most part, I assume it was from her. Do me a favor and show me how you grabbed her. Like, how you tossed her against the headboard. But, like, um... Just the headboard. Yeah. How far away were you? Pretty close, like, this. He's like... Okay, so show me how you grabbed her. How you grabbed her? Just pretend that this is the size. I'm. I really don't know. Okay. I well, how would you know? I, that I just know, like, however I did it, I ended up like, I don't know, just, I don't know, like, put her on the bed, like, I don't know, like, throw her on the bed, and then like she hit her head on her head, but her mom like literally said something to me about it, and I was like, okay, like, listen, like, we know Rosie wasn't in the room at that time. Okay, she, that's something that she would have told she you. She know she left, even if she didn't tell you guys. Okay. This is why I don't even want to talk okay. like, well, because like, we need to figure I out feel what like, happened. yeah, I'm trying, but you, you're saying she didn't tell you that part, like, like I'm lying or something, like. We're not saying you're lying. It's just, she, she was leaving, like, I don't know, y'all can go okay. back and ask, like, she'll probably, she left, like, when she was leaving, she said something to me, like, it was right before she walked out, the, like, she was already, like, halfway out the door, like. Oh, okay. she, uh, she was there. Really. All right, so let's get past know. that. How did you grab? Show me how you normally grab her. How do you normally grab her? Her name's Rose, right? Trinity. Trinity, sorry. Mm -hmm. How do you normally grab Trinity? Uh, like I might pick her up, like this. Okay. So how did you do it today? Same thing. Kennedy picks up on the fact the officers are trying to get a confession out of him. A confession that would show him as a murderer. This is why he gets defensive immediately, but the officer won't let up so easily. So what'd you do with your hands today? You assume that I, I, I beat her, I hit her or something? I'm not assuming that. I said, what did you do with your hands? That's yes, assuming, basically. No. That's basically you're trying to tell me I, I was hitting her or something like that. like. I, I already peeped the whole entire game, man, and it's like, I, I'm trying to tell you guys what happened, what I did, what's going on, with everything, and I got it. Oh, you are? But I think you're leaving some parts out. There's no parts left being out that I promise that, like, I already know, so I'm just like... What do you already know? The way you guys are coming at me, like, do I need to just go ahead and just... Or, I don't know how we're... Or, 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 listen, you know, listen. Or, I'm, I'm, we, we have a dead baby in room 206, yeah. okay? You were the last person with Trinity. I understand, you know, you've been tasked out with this responsibility that you probably don't want nothing to do with. Because how old are you? 24? 24. Okay, you don't have any kids yourself. So why why should you have to be watching this child when it's not even your responsibility, right? I don't want you to put it like that. Okay, but it's been a lot to you. It, it's been it's been hard on you. Let's put it that way, right? Right. Okay. You're 24 years old. You're trying to support your girlfriend, and now you got to support a child, and you're and you're working full time. And now when she's working, you have to watch the child, and then then you probably have to get ready for work, right? And were you supposed to work today? Yeah. And it just it blew up today. It's she, a lot. She was. It is a lot. You're young, man. I understand. You got agitated. You're trying to play your game. She's running around screaming her head off. You're, you're probably worried about that it's bothering the next door neighbors. But listen, man, you, you need to be honest with me and tell me what happened in that room, okay? Because more, a bottle of melatonin isn't going to hurt a baby. 
Maybe it was just because I was just too, like, just too aggressive. Okay. Just take a deep breath. How are you too aggressive? Like, I don't know. Just don't know my own strength. I don't know. Like, maybe I just, I heard it. Okay, now we're getting somewhere, okay? Eventually, evidence that was later presented at the trial revealed the following. Kennedy slammed the toddler's head against the headboard of the bed until she became unconscious. When she woke up, he violently shook her until he passed out again. He then watched as she had a seizure and wiped the blood off of her mouth. While the girl was lying in the room, Officials say Kennedy never tried to call her mother or seek any emergency medical aid. As a result, Kennedy was sentenced to life in prison. On the 5th of April, 2018, Jenea Pratt called over the police officers to check on her 18-month-old daughter. When the officers arrived at the scene, the innocent baby was cold and almost an hour later was declared dead by the paramedics. Later, her blood tests showed large amounts of the poisonous fentanyl following is how the investigation further took place. Did you, did she eat or drink anything? My boyfriend told me he made fish sticks mm -hmm. and I want to say like french fries or something. Okay, no, I'm, that was earlier in the day when you guys got back. Did she mm -hmm. eat or drink anything? No, she didn't eat or drink anything. Okay. She had left her he said she she didn't want her sippy cup before they walked out the door to come and get me. So he left the sippy cup there. Which she sippy got, cup was that? To my knowledge, it should have been the pink one. The pink sippy cup? Mm-hmm. And where was that located? I'm not even sure. I wasn't there. As the officer confronts Jenea, she seems absolutely calm, showing no signs of sadness on losing her daughter suddenly. Indirectly, she tries to say that it was her boyfriend who gave the sippy cup, found with huge amounts of fentanyl, to her daughter. But the cop realizes something isn't right with that story. Did he have that or did she have it? It was left. It was left there? She didn't want it on the way out the door. Okay, when you say on the way out the door, you mean? When they left to come and get come, me from okay. school. Okay, when you came back, did she... That pink sippy cup, do you remember where it was? I didn't even see the sippy cup. Did you give her the sippy, sippy cup at all? I didn't see the sippy cup. Okay. Do you remember it being in her, in her bedroom, that sippy cup? I think I might have found the sippy cup on the way to... I don't, I'm not sure. I just remember, I believe, putting the sippy cup in her bed with her. Okay. Did you put anything in the sippy cup? No, there was a red liquid in it, and I know we had huggies. Yeah, I remember time. seeing some huggies in there. To my, to be more specific, happy drink huggies. Is that what they're called? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, did you, when you were living, let me, I'm just going to show you the, the picture. This is. Um, Is this the same sippy cup you're thinking of? Mm -hmm. Now, did you have put liquid in there um, earlier in the day? Yes. You did? Mm -hmm. Okay. Was that the same sippy cup that you put the liquid in? It was before you went to school, when you got home from school, or? I put a, a different juice drink in there, and she had a complete fit, and she didn't drink it. Okay. So, how the red liquid got in, he changed her sippy cup when he fed her. Okay. He said she drank a little bit and threw it. Okay. Out of that sippy cup. Mm -hmm. The officer continues asking about the details of the sippy cup. Jenea hesitates as she again tries to put the blame on her boyfriend. But the officer is quick to shut it down. There would be no reason like you would get any packages, say, from China or from... Japan or anything like that. Like directly from them? Yeah. I don't think so. Okay. But to your knowledge, you... I ordered everything from Walmart. Okay. okay. Um, so just to be clear, 
the, the, the stuff that was in that sippy cup, you did put in or you did not? I did not. Okay. Okay. Do you have any idea? Um, well, let me, I'm just going to cut. I'm just going to be blunt to you. Your child died from fentanyl poisoning. So why did CYF tell me hypoxic cardiac arrest? Did they, there weren't lab results then. So I'm going to explain this to you, okay? In that sippy cup was fentanyl. In her blood was fentanyl. When they, we just got these results back. It's the same type of fentanyl that people are overdosing every day in Pittsburgh and dying from. Same exact type. Okay. So I need to know how the fentanyl got in the sippy cup. Because right now it's not an accident. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, so scientifically, it's impossible for your daughter to put fentanyl in a sippy cup, okay? Physically, it's impossible for her to. Scientifically, that's another story, but right now, that's, what, that's how she died. The officer bluntly tells her that large amounts of fentanyl were found in her daughter's blood. However, instead of being shocked, Jenea just nods in a very relaxed way. The officer knows beating around the bush will get them nowhere, so he goes straight in for a statement. It wasn't a heart attack. It wasn't any other reason other than she overdosed on fentanyl, which is the same fentanyl that people in the streets are dying on every single day. How the fentanyl get in the sippy cup, Jenea? Just straight fentanyl? Yeah. So what is it, like a liquid? A, a, a I'm not a scientist. It comes in a liquid form. It comes in a powder form. I, I'm not exactly sure. But what I am sure of is that that fentanyl was put in a sippy cup, and there was liquid mixed into it, and it was given to Charlotte, and that's how she died. So I need to know how that got in there. I have no knowledge to how fentanyl got in my daughter's sippy cup. Okay. As Jania shows no signs of cooperation, the officer directly asks her how such a poisonous drug got into her daughter's sippy cup, implicating her involvement. She gets nervous but again refuses to know anything about it. However, if she were truly innocent, she wouldn't act out the way she does. She was poisoned intentionally. Okay, well, okay. I've been making complaints to my rent office because I've been smelling a funny smell in my house uh, several times returning back to my house. This is since you've moved or? No, this is living in apartment number five. This is where you used to live? Yes. Saying. Okay. Well, that still wouldn't explain how it got in the sippy cup. Well, I'm just as clueless as you are. So are you implicating that I put fentanyl in my child's sippy cup? No, I, I, but based on this timeline, I mean, there's only two people that could have put fentanyl in the sippy cup based on what you just told me about 10 minutes ago, and based on the whole timeline of that day. I need to know how it got in there, because this, this investigation is not going away. Okay, and I'm telling you, I returned to my house from being picked up from school, mm -hmm. and I did nothing out of the usual. Okay. We took our stuff off, and she ran around and played, and I'm waiting for my social worker to come. Okay. Do you get fentanyl delivered from China? I have, I know, I don't know anything about fentanyl. Okay. Did you ever put anything in her sippy cup other than no. huggy juice? She's drank water. She's drank milk. She's drank Kool-Aid liquids. 
But have you ever put anything in there? No, I have not. Okay. Other than... I mean, because some parents will give their kids a little bit of, you know, Benadryl or something like that. So like, no, that doesn't go in a sippy cup because it's supposed to be measured out and Benadryl is not supposed to be drank. Tylenol is not supposed to be drank over a specific amount of hours. It's supposed to be one dose and that's it. Right. I agree with you. I agree with you. But people, parents... I'm not one of those people okay. or parents. Okay. Jenea sits defensively in front of the officer with her arms crossed. She gets extremely aggressive on hearing the officers imply that either she or her boyfriend poisoned her daughter. Disregarding the murder entirely, Jenea tries her best to present her clean slate to the officer. It, it wouldn't be the first time, okay? I'm just asking. But the problem, we have a problem right now. Would you, is that safe to say that there's a problem? I mean, I have, I have, I have to figure out how this got in there because your baby is, can't tell me. Is there a reason someone would want to do that? With some, is there a reason why fentanyl would be in a sippy cup? No, there's not. And no, there's not a reason anybody would want to. The amount of fentanyl that was in her system was extremely high. Okay. It was, it, it was, very high and that's essentially when she drank the sippy cup whenever she picked that sippy cup off the bed it was absorbed very quickly and once she swallowed it she didn't have much time to survive that's not possible because i didn't physically see her with her sippy cup and we were at home i was with her i can't tell you the exact time frame but when i got home because mm -hmm. I went to the welfare office a little bit after I, as soon as I left school. There's Jania doesn't help the officer in finding out how her daughter was murdered, but continues to insist strongly that there is no way she or her boyfriend could have poisoned her. Unfortunately, the officer doesn't believe her, and that ticks her off. I'm going to step out for a little bit, let you think about this. There's nothing to think about. Okay, well, I need to step out anyway. All right, but I, that's why I brought you here was to tell you exactly what happened and what we found. And I mean, it wasn't really me, but it was you know scientists and you know people at the lab that discovered all this. Medical examiners, doctors. Okay. Okay. So, am I under arrest? No. Are there any more questions? I just want to know how it got in there. That's, that's the big question. I don't know how it got in there. This is news to me like it's news to you. If you had to guess how it got in there, is there any way, you know, any guess you could have? A manufacturing issue with the happy drinks. So you think it could have been the, the huggy? Yes, and as a matter of fact, I took a sip of those huggies and I actually, it didn't really have a, a pleasing taste to it. Mm. We tested the huggies. Mm. No fat, no. Jenea continues getting more agitated on knowing that she could be arrested, leaving the detective baffled at her behavior. She calmly states that she has no idea how fentanyl got into the sippy cup and implies that they should just release her. Any more questions? No. Am I under arrest? No. Can I go? Sure. She simply states that if there are no other questions, then she wants to leave and leaves immediately after the detective gives her permission. Later, when evidence is found, she is arrested again. In the end, Jania Pratt is convicted of involuntary manslaughter with a jail sentence of only 10 years. On February 19, 2024 in Ohio, 45-year-old Laquandra Williams brutally murdered her 21-year-old son, Jihad Hughes, in their apartment. Laquandra is immediately considered a suspect and taken in for interrogation. Following is the footage that depicts the questioning session between her and the officers. 
I know there was some argument that went on today that somehow led up to all of this. Can you tell me what happened? Um, so I was leaving my, I came home early in between my two clients and Jai used my car and I asked him where he took my car at because he took my car to like a, the shop and left it there. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, did you leave, how long did you leave it there? And what what did they do? I, my car is not ride, riding away. I just got my car fixed. So he went and answered me. So I walked back to the room and I went back into the living room where he was at and, I, he, and he got up to, he got up to like grab his stuff. Mm -hmm. And I said, I'm talking to you, answer me. And so I threw, a glass but I, it went over to his head like a candle mm -hmm. but it went over his head it didn't touch him uh -huh. and then he grabbed me up and threw me in the living room which was something we he never ever ever done uh -huh. and we have had arguments but he never ever put his hands on me ever uh -huh. and I was trying to get him off of me I was getting a knife because I know like he's stronger than I am way stronger than my I know and out of impulse, like I should have, you know, that's, yeah, a lot, it was tussle in the kitchen, I went outside, because he carried, he carried one of my other guns, I went outside and mm -hmm. got a gun, because I didn't want him to hurt me, mm -hmm. but, yeah, I'm taking responsibility, that's my child, I don't want nothing to happen to any of my kids. Well, how did things go down outside? He started walking up to me. I didn't know if he had a phone number or not. You know, like, that's the gun that I gave to him. So, because he, where he work at, but, like, I didn't know. He kept walking up, and that's when I pointed it at him. But, y'all, that's my son. I ain't never. Where'd you get the gun from? I bought the gun in New Lexington. I bought two of them in New Lexington because I own a, I own a home help and I have a contract with the Veterans Department. So I used to drive from where we live at to mm -hmm. New Lexington at night time. Mm -hmm. So my my um, patient took me over there, took me over there. Okay, where was it though? Where would where, where did you keep the gun that you're going to get the gun at? Where do you keep your gun at? In, in the armrest of the car. I don't really bring it into the house because we inside the house. I only take it when I need to go like work. If I'm out, it's locked in the arm. Mm -hmm. Is that where it was today? But I thought he was going to, he never ever had done that to me. You see in my house, like threw me around, squeezing me up like I'm going to kill you and your boyfriend. I don't even know why he was saying that he would kill me and my boyfriend. Like that's not even my boyfriend. That's just somebody that comes over my house. Like, he never say that to me. The detective inquires about the argument that took place between LaQuandra and her son. She states defensively that, during the argument, he got violent with her, too. The conflict further escalated, and LaQuandra finally went out to get her gun, which she says she only did for self-defense. The officers are horrified by what they hear, but still press for more details. Did you see a gun on him today? Um, but I don't know. Did he threaten you with a gun? Did he say he was going to get his gun? I didn't see it at all. I didn't but did he that. never mention it? Never. He's, you just assumed because you gave him one a while back that he had it with him. He carried it with him everywhere you go. He leave it up. He, you know, that's that's. He shouldn't have went this far, y'all. Uh, but you didn't see it today. He never I, made mention I, of it today. I think he was. Okay. Why did you get the knife out? Because it kept he grabbed me up and threw me down. He, threw me down on the ground. I kept trying to get him off of me. My kids were trying to get him off of him. Like he wouldn't get off of me. Uh huh. So, were you interviewed with your other, your other daughters there, too? What yeah. I've seen. Yeah, okay. they were there. Okay. And they said that the, the fight was over. You were upset because of, of the keys, that or the car wasn't working right or something like that, right? They were in their room when it first started. Right, they did say you that. You can check our text messages. I had already texted, you could text his text message. I had already texted him about the car already. Mm -hmm. And he said, I'm not going to do this with you. I'm, he said, if you be on drama, I'm going to leave. I just was asking him, like, why did you take my car over there and leave it there? Because, like, he repo cars for somebody. Mm -hmm. So he took your car and left it there to get fixed. Something? No, he took my car over to the place where him and his friend, him and the pa pastor's son, they, he owned a car lot and they was repoing the car early this morning. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't have 
got nothing to hide. I ain't lying. The officer asks her if she saw a gun on Jihad, to which she replies that she assumed he also had a gun on him, which eventually led her to bring out her own gun. The officers realize the woman is doing nothing but playing a victim card. So they turn up the heat a little with their questions. Get back out of the house. How long are you sitting outside? I don't know, maybe like four minutes or something like that. When he came out? Yeah, because I kept trying to tell them to throw my phone out and the keys so I can leave. Mm -hmm. But they're like, no, we're calling the police. We're calling the police. And I knew he was going to leave before the police got there because I was going to press charges on Because like, he never done that to me before. So why wouldn't they let you back in the house if they were calling the police? Because I, I, they knew my gun is outside. Okay. Yeah. Did so you tell them you were going out to get it? They already knew what I was going outside. Yeah. But did they know you were going to get the gun? No, I didn't say that. But I guess what I'm asking is if, if he was the aggressor, why did the girls lock you out and not let you back in? Because they know to separate us. They know to separate. Do you guys fight regularly? Yeah, yeah. We but he never had put his hands on me before. But we get into it a lot, a lot, a whole lot. Verbally or are you physical? It's always verbally. It's never been physical. Now, this is the first physical time. When the officers ask her about going outside to grab her gun, she changes her statement and says that she only wants to leave and report Jihad to the police. At this point, officers can tell that LaQuandra is trying to make a fool out of them. So if you didn't see the gun, he didn't threaten you with a gun, why'd you pull the trigger? I mean, what were you thinking at that point? That he was going to keep going at it, keep coming after me, keep, keep going. But did he have his bags with him like he was leaving? Yeah, he had his bags with him, he was like he was leaving. He was laughing. Yeah. So at that point, it seemed like he was leaving and the fight was over. Mm -hmm. No? Were you just really mad by that point? No, I wasn't mad. I was just... Mm -hmm. I thought you had that gun on me. always have it on him. Like, I don't know what transpired to be between him saying, I'm going to kill you and your boyfriend to, to make it bigger than it. Like, the girl said that you said you were going out the car to get your gun. They said that's why they locked the door. I didn't speak. I was upset. I didn't speak. I just left. Well, the thing is, is they were both interviewed separately, and they both told us you said the same thing, which is a little I didn't odd. speak. So, yeah. how does that happen? Then? Maybe, maybe I did speak, but I don't know. It was okay. happened so fast. Because they both, I mean, I admit verbatim to what what you said going outside. So you, you clearly said something. Because they were separated immediately when the officers would get there. They didn't have time to get their stories together because mm -hmm. one, think I Maya was still that. upstairs when the officers got there. So they didn't have time to get together and say anything. I'm, I'm not saying they did. Okay. I don't remember. Maybe I did. Maybe I didn't. It was of all facts. So what happened inside when you guys were fighting? Did the girls get involved at all at any point? Yeah, they were trying to. T they were telling him to stop. S stop. They were saying stop so she can stop. Stop so she can stop. But he wouldn't stop. LaQuandra is then asked if she didn't see a gun on her son, then why did she pull the trigger to which she gets nervous but quickly says it was because he always had a gun with him. The story is clearly not adding up, no matter how hard she may try to make it sound credible. I mean, we're going off of what they're telling us. It's okay. And it, it sounded the way that they described things. Yeah, I'm that, aggressive. Yeah. And, I mean, it, did you ever hit them? When they were like little, or or even the my last year, um, well, the year not last year, but the year before that, well, graduation time, maybe May, yeah. I was always a very aggressive parent, so they wouldn't do wrong or stuff. But so yeah, I can understand why they say that. So you did not see a gun. He didn't threaten you to get a gun. He didn't mention his gun. You just know he has one because you gave him one. Mm -hmm. Did you see it at all today? I wasn't paying no attention. That's just an accident about the car. I really wasn't paying no attention like that. Okay. So you didn't see it sitting on the counter or the couch? I didn't see it on the couch, but I, I didn't even see it. And then she describes the shooting. What did he say to you after you shot him? He said, oh my, you shot me. And I said, oh my God, you're hot. And then I turned him. Um, I took his, I took uh, the book bag off his back. I put pressure on it. I took the clothes 
and started trying to wrap him into it. And then he started vomiting. And my daughter was screaming. We was holding the thing. So I shot my son. Jesus Christ. But did he take the cut knife away from you or? He was, uh, they all was trying to take, they so all was trying. all three of them were? Mm. Okay. I was trying to take the knife away from him. But he was him. like, cause he had me choking me. He slammed me on the ground. Yeah, the girl said he slammed you, but it was to get the knife away from you. He told, they said that he told them to back off so they didn't get hurt. So if, let me ask you a question. And if he had the gun, why would he let you come at him with a knife? And God house. is a fighter. He, he not okay. worried about no knife. Okay. But why would the girls say that you were the aggressor with the knife in the house and he was trying to get it away from you? I mean, like I said, we, we, we interviewed them separately. They didn't I'm have not a chance. I'm going to switch it up. Yeah, they didn't I have didn't a chance to, to talk to him. I didn't want him to be hitting on me. I didn't want him to be choking me. I didn't want him to be slamming me. So that's why I got a knife. Because okay. he's big. Look how big he is compared to me. Look how <laughs> much, much he is compared to me. When LaQuandra finds out that witnesses have another story to tell, one which is completely opposite to her tall tales. She finds herself backed into a corner. The officers know they're very close to the truth now, so they pull an emotional trick on her. Well, I will tell you, unfortunately, your son did not make it. Oh, God. And I'm so, I'm so sorry. What? <laughs> they worked on him for at least close to an hour. That he did survive his injuries. Take me. You can take me. I don't deserve that. He didn't either. Yo. Well, I think you need to do his name justice. And I know that that's not true that he was attacking you. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. Move it's okay. Girl. It's okay. No, it's I want okay. you to tell the truth. I, 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 I only want the truth. I don't want you to say something just because it's not true. But I don't have to lie. I don't have to lie. I don't have to lie. I'm not gonna say I, nothing that's not true. Like, I have to live with this. You know what I'm saying? I, but I think I'm, you're like, angry, though. I think you're angry because we all get angry at times. I mean, it's like we both have kids. Both we know how frustrating it is to try to get through. But um, I think, unfortunately, that you probably were angry and the pressure probably got to you. <laughs> yeah. But I, y'all, I'm so sorry. Your 18 year old said to tell you that she loves you. Sorry, y'all. Tell him I'm sorry. I'm about, I was so angry because he don't listen to nothing I say. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I be mean, working hard, working, working, working hard. And he don't even, he work at a car light. He worked at a car light. And I said to her yesterday, I said, to her, if I was to die today, you wouldn't even get the inheritance that you're supposed to get. Because I put my money with the Navy forever. You wouldn't even get it because you're not even doing what you're supposed to do. Mm -hmm. You know, everybody else, like, I was just so angry with them. But, like, y'all, I didn't mean to do that. Like, I'm serious. The officers then tell her that her son did not make it, to which she gets shocked and starts crying hysterically and tells the officers to arrest her. In a shocking turn of events, she admits that in her fit of rage, she murdered her child. Can you, can you have one of you come here, please? I'm not going to do no, nothing. Sit back down. Please have one of them come in there. What do you What do you need? Are you sure it must have gone? Are you yes. Sh oh. 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 Y'all. Y'all can sit. Okay, sit down for us. We'll get you I'm moving here. I'm not going to go nowhere. I just okay. don't want to. If you get back up, we'll put you back in cuffs. I don't right? want to live no more. Please. Then, Williams is cut. LaQuandra seemed to go crazy as she begged the officers to check if it was really her son who died. In the end, LaQuandra Williams is charged with murder and assault and sentenced to 18 years in life in prison.